Water flows through the lateral lines to irrigate a zone only when a valve receives an electrical signal from the controller via a wire. The controller is like the brain, the wires are like the nervous system, and the valves are like the heart pumping water to the zones, keeping plant material alive and healthy. All these components working together are critical for an irrigation system to operate. In this video, we will show you how to install valves and how to wire them up in the controller. Before we get started, here's a few things you'll need. Primer, glue, fittings, valve, correct size and type of wire, waterproof wire splices, good set of wire strippers and some regular wire nuts for temporary use, and Teflon tape or Teflon paste. Once you have the correct valve for the project, you need to first excavate and then clear the area where the valve will be installed. Make sure to note the direction of the flow on the valve and install it accordingly. Some installers will use unions to make future maintenance easier. A union is a type of fitting that allows you to disassemble a piece of pipe and reassemble without the need for cutting the pipe. It's especially useful in a valve installation because it will allow you to remove, maintain, or replace a valve body easily. If unions are not used, be sure to leave some extra room for possible cutting of the pipe in the future if the valves need to be replaced. If you're using threaded valves, hand tighten the nipple or adapter into the valve, then tighten one half turn more using a wrench. Do not over tighten the nipple or male adapter and be sure not to hold the solenoid or use it for leverage as this could damage it. You could use a second tool or a vise to hold the valve body. Over tightening is the number one reason a valve will fail on a new installation. Also, use Teflon tape or Teflon paste to ensure a watertight connection. If you're using a slip socket valve, do not apply too much solvent that could be pushed into the downstream exhaust port area of the valve. When using slip by slip valves, one union on each side is needed. Notice that we added PVC ball valves upstream from each valve. This makes it easier to perform maintenance on an individual zone while the rest of the system remains pressurized. For a complete video of a valve installation, be sure to watch the full length video. Now that the valve is installed, we need to wire it to the controller for automatic operation. Wire comes in different types and sizes, so it's important to know what type of wire you should be using on your installation. Wire for irrigation systems should be rated for direct burial, meaning it can be run underground. Look for direct burial or an abbreviation UF or underground listed on the wire. This means that it is underground feeder, able to be buried underground. The material that coats the wire is known as insulation, and if present, the protective outer shell is called jacketing. Multi-strand wire is often used for systems that have shorter wire run needs. In this case, the jacket protects the multiple strands of colored wire inside. There are different numbers of wires available in the jacket, depending on the needs of the system. Larger systems will use single conductor wire for each valve wire and one additional wire for the common wire that is attached to each valve. It is common practice to use white insulated wire for the common wire and a different color insulated wire for the station wires. Direct burial wire is usually laid in the trench with the main line. Conduit is an option or it may be specified on the plans. Because wire will expand and contract with changes in weather, and to help with potential future adjustments, make sure to add expansion loops in the installation. A few feet should be enough. If you're low on wire in a spool, 
Make sure to end the run at a valve location to minimize the amount of splices and pull boxes on the site. It is a best practice to ensure all wire connections are kept in valve boxes at the control valve locations and leave extra wire length at each valve location to make future maintenance easier. Splicing wires is the process of combining two different wires together. In this case, you'll splice the wire from the valve solenoid to the wire running back to the controller. Your splice connection could make or break your system, so it's important to do it right. Always use waterproof wire nuts. We recommend a 3M DBRY-6 for two wire connections and the 3M DBOB or Hunter WC100 for solenoid connections. Before making any connections of the wires, you should make sure that the power is off on the controller. The first thing that you need to do is strip the jacket to expose the wire threads within it. Using your wire strippers, cut back the insulation on the terminal wire and the solenoid wire. Make sure to strip them back at the same length. About three quarters of an inch should be good. Take one wire from the solenoid and connect it to the common wire for the system, usually a white insulated wire. The other wire from the solenoid is then connected to its own unique wire which is installed to the specific zone number terminal in the controller. Here we have two valves together, so we take one wire from each solenoid and the common wire, put them together so that the exposed wires are touching, and then use the wire nut to twist the wires together, making the connection. Now we take the green station wire and connect it to the other wire from the solenoid on the first valve. The second valve is being wired to the yellow station wire. If you're using a grease filled wire nut, then you're all done. If you're using a two piece connector, check that the signal to the controller is good before inserting the wire nut and wires into the gel filled tube. Be sure to push the wire all the way to the bottom of the tube for a moisture resistant connection. A small diameter screwdriver or rigid wire can be used to help push the wire nut fully into the tube. Once you have the wire splices completed, it is best practice to keep them up near the top of the valves away from the bottom of the valve box. With the wires from the valve solenoids spliced together with the wires from the controller, your connection should be complete. Now that the valve is installed and working, it's time to install the valve box. Valve boxes allow for easy access to the valves while keeping them, the solenoids, and wires out of the elements and out of sight. The first step is to clear out the area around the valve and prep the base underneath the valve and pipe for drainage. I prefer a method using landscape fabric and crushed gravel. Another common method includes using brick support and gravel backfill. After the area is prepped, place the valve box around the valve and make sure it's not sticking above the ground to avoid tripping hazards.
Now that the valve is installed, wired, working and backfilled, your system is ready to irrigate.